Well, good afternoon and welcome to the city of Irvine. I'm so pleased to be here and along with Vice Mayor Carroll, how are you today? Good Doing to well, see you thanks. again. This is our second virtual town hall meeting. And um, last week we determined we had about 250 participants and viewers. So we were very pleased to think that our first virtual tour turned out so well. And at this time, I would like to turn this over to Vice Mayor Carroll, and uh, we'll be looking forward to answer your questions and any of your concerns you have today. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And I just wanted to say hello to everyone out there, and thank you again for those of, it, of you that joined us last week. Uh, welcome back. For those of you that are joining us uh, for the first time, welcome. Uh, it's really, uh, as Mayor said, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to um, receive your questions, and we've received many, many questions for the first one and a, and, a, and a whole grouping of questions for the second town hall, and we really look forward to answering these questions. Um, and we just also want to reiterate before we get started, and you'll see this number on the screen, and, and we apologize in advance, we'll be repeating it a lot, almost like a telephone, as we said last time, <laughs> that we have this hotline number. We actually have a new number for community uh, outreach as well, a separate number, but we have a main COVID-19 hotline number. We are not going to let anyone who is in need of assistance in the city of Irvine go without help. Uh, and with that, we know that this, these are extremely, extremely uh, challenging times, uh, but we are a strong, caring community. It's an honor for us to be here uh, helping in some way uh, to address the needs of that community. Uh, we will get through this together. Uh, and with that, Mayor Shea, um, thank you for allowing me to open. So nice to see you again. Actually, the two numbers that we'll be sharing with you multiple times during the afternoon, the Ombudsman number, our hotline number is 949-724-8250. And our additional number is also 724-7200. So make sure you write those numbers down. The first number is the number to call for any emergency, any extra care help you need. So please have that number. I, hopefully you're going to be getting your postcard. We thought you would get it at uh, the end of last week, but it looks like it's coming out this week. Is that correct? Our staff is over here. Thank you. So we'll look like we'll be getting that postcard this week. It'll have all the information so you can keep it right by your phone. So I will turn this over to our assistant city manager, Mariana Marasheva, who will be here and asking questions for us. Molly is not feeling well. She doesn't have COVID-19, though. She just said she had something else she wasn't feeling good about. So welcome. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, Mayor and Vice Mayor. Very nice to be here. The first question is for you, Mayor. Andrew T. is asking, what is the current status of the stay-at-home order, and when can we go back to work? Well, thank you so much, Andrew. I appreciate you uh, writing in with your uh, question. Uh, it's somewhat fluid. We do follow the uh, state of California under Governor Newsom's direction. Right now, it extends uh, until further notice. It was to end uh, just recently, May 1st, but now it looks like he's suggesting May 15th, and it actually could go beyond that if, in fact, we see the numbers. I think they're looking at numbers need to be stabilized and going down for 14 days in a row. So the city will also be extending our stay-at-home uh, following the state's directive. We really do work under their direction, uh, but we're all hoping we can get back and things can go back to normal as soon as possible. Vice Mayor, this next question is for you. Jose R. is asking, what is the city of Irvine doing and planning to do to ease the financial pain on the small business community in the city? Great, thank you. That's a great question. Thank you, thank you, Jose. Uh, we are, in short, doing a lot. Um, we are working uh, in partnership with the Greater Irvine Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the mayor also has been uh, spearheading this as well with our head of economic development, Caitlin Wynn. Uh, and there are a number of programs that many of you have probably heard about. I would just briefly mention them. Uh, the Paycheck Protection Program uh, is something that businesses are looking at taking advantage of. Uh, and I'm happy to say, and just repeating the news, that we heard that the funds had actually been depleted. Yes. But as of today, I think agreement was reached in Congress, and we are getting a refresh to that, um, those numbers. So small businesses in Irvine, we're hoping all the small businesses in Irvine that are looking for help will be able to receive help. And then the second program is the EDIL, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Yes. That's one that provides a $10,000 grant and apparently larger loan sizes as well. 
Uh, I do have some clients in Irvine, and I can tell you firsthand, Mayor, that uh, business in Irvine have received paycheck protection loan uh, funding. Not many, but a few. And this has, you know, truth be told, it's been slow going. But yes. I do know of a few. In fact, two of my clients have received funding for this program and bringing employees back from furlough to employment in Irvine. So we're really excited about that. You know, and that's wonderful. I know some of the frustration we've been hearing is that uh, folks in the business community are concerned that where do you draw the line for small business? So there are small businesses that are actually fairly large, and the small businesses we know in all of our retail centers, we're talking maybe five, ten employees or less, That's right. between, uh, ten or less. And so the frustration is many of these small, really small businesses, but we call them small. They make up a majority of our, our business community. They're not getting this money, but more of the higher-end small business companies uh, companies uh, are getting the money. So I think there's been a lot of frustration. So it's really good to hear oh, yeah. that the federal government is aware of that and now they're approving more money going forward. And I hope it really does help our local retail centers. We have so many around the city that really need this money and need it desperately. Yeah, and these are small businesses. There are our donut shops, our dry cleaners, exactly. our small hardware stores. The, the poster child for this, uh, it just happened, is the Shake Shack restaurant. We don't really have too many of those here because we have, Ruby's Diner runs the Shake Shack, so there's some kind of a name dispute. But elsewhere in America is the Shake Shack Burger Place. We're talking about a place that has thousands of employees, under 500, right. applying for these loans, getting a huge loan because they had separate franchise organizations. So it was all, yeah, it wasn't done right. Let's just say that they announced they gave back their loan. Because and this is the last, the, in this time, it's the last thing we want to do is to create infighting and, right. and difficulties. So I'm hoping that there will be a, um, the way they categorize it would be a lot better. So the very low, uh, the smaller business would definitely have a certain uh, chunk of money that they need to get to be fair. And then it kind of goes up in a tiered um, a focus, so hopefully that that's going to be taken care of. But it is a concern, but we're here, uh, and we want to encourage you. Our Meg Donuts are open. Ace Hardware is open. They just do it in a very yep. careful way, and so if you have a small business, then you can still um, operate under the, the parameters that many of these other small businesses are. Please, we want you to bring your employees back, and let's get as many businesses moving forward as possible. Mayor, this next question is for you. Alvaro A. is asking, has the city considered providing masks and gloves to the city residents? Well, thank you. I really appreciate that question. Um, about two and a half weeks ago, our CM CAMA, as our Chinese community group, one of the many that we have here in the city, uh, donated about 8,500 masks to our city. And so council member Quo, I think I mentioned this last week, Quo, myself, uh, Vice Mayor Carroll, and council member uh, Khan, we went out to all of the grocery stores and our uh, pharmacies and passed out masks. But now that we have really encouraged um, all of the um, customers also to beware them, we're out again. I was out this weekend passing masks out, and we're encouraging all of our grocery stores and retail to, here's extra masks, please offer them to any of your customers that come in that don't have them, because we just don't want to frustrate everybody. And this past week, Five Point Community gave us, I think, close to 5,000 masks. They have more coming in. Um, CAMA gave us another 11,000 masks. So we, we have about 16,000 masks, 15 to 16,000. Some are remaining from the last group. So we have masks, but we have to make sure they're going to our grocery stores and the customers are going into the stores. Uh, and then, of course, our first responders and our hospitals are receiving the first allocation. So we're doing our best, and that was a very good question, to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to have a mask. And also, if you go onto our web page, you'll see that we have links to a lot of new businesses that have just sprung up during this time that are making uh, cloth masks for um, folks and selling them at a very reasonable price. So we'd encourage you to go to our uh, Facebook. Uh, it's not our Facebook, it's our webpage. Yeah. And look at the um, different links that are offering to get masks, and you could probably get them fairly quickly. So hopefully that answers your question. Vice Mayor Carroll, this question is for you. James M. is asking, should we report gatherings of people at public parks? Uh, that's a really good question, James. Um, I would just start by saying this. We, this is a repeat question from our town hall. 
Um, we, do, we would just start by saying there's really no need to take, for anyone to take the law into their own hands or to create some kind of a, uh, enforcement as a member of the public. Uh, we know the rules. We've been doing our, our part to disseminate the rules, the city council, the mayor, and ourselves, to get the information out that we need to be socially distanced by six feet and wear masks, particularly in the establishments that we talked about. We can list those out, but generally it's the, you know, the supermarkets and the, the, the you know, the drug stores and the, the dry cleaners and the hardware stores and self-storage and so on. Um, if you find you're in a situation outside, and we really want to encourage people to get out and use our parks and use our trails, this is part of the normalcy or the type of normalcy, right, that we can create. So I would say, James, and for those of you that have that question, absolutely make note of it and call our public safety. Um, is it a 911 call? It's probably more of a 949-724-7200 call. Right. Mayor smiling. Um, <laughs> and we will get people out there. In fact, I was out there um, moving near the Quail Hill Loop and near, um, over by where the mayor is, and I saw just last weekend three of our public safety uh, sworn officers on mountain bikes, just, mm -hmm. just, you know, just literally doing a loop and trading through. And hopefully that the, the, the presence, the mere presence, but also... If the need for a nudge or enforcement is there, it's going to happen. So if you, if you feel like the presence is not there, you feel like it's, the distancing's not happening, obviously there's certain trails where we're, we've, we've set up to only go one way and create distancing to, to, to not cause problems where some of the few trails that we have that are more narrow, please call public safety and we'll get on it right away. Thank you. Mayor Robert H. has a question for you. He's asking, what is the guidance on the use of grass areas along walking trails? Am I allowed to play catch there with my child? Well, thank you so much, Robert. Actually, it's somewhat of a sad question to be asking us because the last thing we've ever wanted to do was to shut down any kind of open space or play areas. So no, our play areas, we've been very, very careful. Our green belt areas, our open space, our parks, uh, we want them to remain open. Really what we're concerned about is following the six foot distancing guideline. We would like you to make sure that wherever you are, if there's other families out on the grass areas with you to make sure that you, uh, make sure that you, your family, obviously if you've been together all this time, you don't have to worry about that distancing, but anybody else that you don't live with or you're not close to, you should have a six foot distancing. But we definitely want you out there playing with your children, playing kickball. I know I got a call from a resident uh, very frustrated about the fact that the tot lots are closed. Well, they're, they're uh, roped off only from the standpoint that the virus can live on the metal um, handles and swings and whatnot for like seven days. So we want to be extra careful. But all the areas around the tot locks, uh, you can get out there and do very passive, fun things. Play frisbee, play kickball, uh, throw the ball, whatever you know you can you want to do. You probably can get out there and practice golf, I would assume, with a What's, what's that softball called, a golf ball? Oh. A wimp, it starts with a W. Oh, like a wiffle ball? A wiffle ball. Is that <laughs> correct? <laughs> it's funny because my wiffle ball actually has a crack in it. So we oh, actually have to get a new one. It's funny you said that. I just <laughs> It's identified. been a long time, but I would say that, yeah, anything you want, we want you outdoors. In fact, I just posted something on my Facebook. A doctor was saying one of the best things for any of us, the best thing for all of us to do is to get exercise. It builds up your immune system. Yeah. Uh, and it helps you fight off any kind of viruses. So we want you, I'm out every day. I walk three to five, six miles a day. And um, I don't take Fluffy on quite those long a walk. She can't handle six miles, but I do. Sure. So I'll take her for short ones and then take a walk. So <laughs> please get out and enjoy the, especially now the weather's warming up, supposedly in the very hot weather, the, the virus does seem to die off. But we want you outdoors. We want you enjoying your family and um, being healthy. Vice Mayor Linda E. has a question for you. She's asking, is the city considering implementing a one-way food traffic rule to help residents follow social distancing? Yes, um, Linda, we absolutely have addressed that um, in those places we mentioned a little bit earlier, where we have trails that are too narrow for six feet distancing uh, as people are going side by side in, in two different directions. So certain things like I think the Bomber Canyon Trail, for example, uh, is going to be a one-way trail. And 
just to just clarify a little further on these trails, the city of Irvine operates a lot of these trails. A place like Bomber Canyon and some of the places in the northern sphere, the northern, north of Irvine Boulevard, is run by a separate nonprofit called the Irvine Ranch Conservancy, and they also are working with us hand in hand on these rules. Now, some of these trails may have been closed, not because of COVID-19, but because of the rains. So for example, Bomber Canyon Trail was closed last Saturday to the dismay of a lot of people. I, I went by there myself on bikes with the kids, and it was sort of a, a real drag to be able to tell people, yeah, and, and people's you know, dissatisfaction when it was closed. But it was due to the rain. So now that the rains are, are through, this should be opening back up. And we always ask why we're doing this. What is the point of all this? Um, the point, obviously, is to slow the spread of the virus. I mean, we have these numbers. We have them as recent as last time we did this town hall, Mayor, we had 100 cases in Irvine. And today, we have 118 which is easy, 18% increase. The county of Orange was at 1,283, and today is at 1,676, 30% increase. And our state doing the same numbers from the last town hall to now, 38%. Right. So is Irvine doing its part? Are all these things very difficult? Absolutely. Did the mayor and myself and our council colleagues wanna put in these rules and create an emergency and enforce these things? Absolutely not. But the numbers are the numbers, and it's proof positive that you, each of you, all of us, in, in acting in these ways and walking one way on narrow trails and the difficulties involved with just hanging around with your family and not getting together with friends, um, it's very, very difficult. But at the same time, it is working. It, 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 and it's certainly working in Irvine, Mayor. Well, you know what's interesting is based on population, we are one of the lowest cities in Orange County as far as cases go. Okay, yeah. But because it seems like they say Irvine and our numbers are 118 and the numbers are higher, but if you look at the population base itself compared to other cities in Orange County, we're actually one of the lowest. I would think we're like fourth from the bottom. That's so amazing. that's good too. 34 cities. Yep. So thank you. You're welcome. Mayor, this next question is for you. Karen W. is asking, how is the city helping the homeless and people needing food? That's a very good question, Karen. Uh, the Irvine Police Department, we have a homeless liaison officers um, organization within the IPD. And our homeless liaison team, they go out throughout the city. We have a very low population of homeless individuals. But they go out, and when they identify uh, someone that is homeless, they bring them bags of uh, water, granola bars, toiletries, and then also try to find locations within the county if they are really in need of uh, housing, of where we could actually encourage them, even take them, if they would like us to, to a shelter. Um, and also our Families Forward organization, they're always helping families that are on the verge of homelessness. Or we do have some families that live in their car, believe it or not, with their children, and they don't like to identify themselves because they're worried their children won't be taken away from them. But we have a pretty good idea of who they are, and we're always reaching out to help. So we're very much on top of this. We're very concerned about our Irvine homeless folks and those that are on the verge of homelessness. And I would just have to give kudos to our Irvine Police Department and our liaison, homeless liaison um, officers that every day and in, 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 into the night are looking for and helping those that don't have a place to live. Vice Mayor, this next question from Cindy S. is for you. How can we report businesses that are not practicing proper social distancing guidelines? Um, oh, thank you, Cindy. That's a good question, but it seems very repetitive. Apparently, I'm getting all the enforcement questions, uh, Assistant City Manager. That's because you look so what? tough. You're like the tough guy on the block up here. The mayor, had, well, I've been assigned all the uh, enforcement. Same same issue, Cindy, and, and others. You know, again, we don't want to be in a, you know, in, a, in a state or a police state where we're enforcing things. Um, I cannot express how, how um, uncomfortable and unhappy that the mayor, she that Mayor Shea and Council Member Quo and Council Member Khan and Council Member Fox and myself are to have to do all this. You know, the, the response from the public has been really positive. The numbers have shown it. We've really helped here in Irvine. Uh, if you see that proper social distancing is not occurring, we're not asking for citizen arrests. We just ask that you call public safety, 949-724-7200. 
Uh, Mayor, I don't know if you have anything really to add to that, but right. um, but and and these questions are important. But I would only add, and I think you're out there so much too, as well outside. I and I'm outside every day with the with the kiddos. I am not seeing too much in in, in the way of non-compliance. I'm I'm really not. We've had a few complaints through the <clears throat> Irvine Police Department at some of our retail stores that people just refuse to put a mask on. Okay. I just really don't like to see, I mean, it's law now, we've mandated it, so it looks like that if they continue to do that, we would certainly consider giving them a ticket or some enforcement, because if we make a law, we have to enforce it. But on the other hand, we don't want to be heavy-handed, difficult with people when they're so stressed out and under so much pressure right now. So our offices are great. They go out when the store calls and said this customer won't put a mask on. They really go out and have conversations with folks without being yeah. heavy handed. So I'm very appreciative that we have under Chief Hamill, a, a fantastic um, police department that enforces our law, but it does it in a very um, polite, kind and gentle way. And also what's nice too is the, I wanna say thank you to our businesses, our small business community, because I've seen in at least the places that, that, that I've gone, many signs up that just say, you know, pursuant to city of Irvine, here's the rules, enter with a mask only. So I really appreciate that too. I don't, there's no standard sign or anything like that. It's just our business community has stepped up right. and said, we have to kind of help play our part here too. And it helps their own employees as well. Well, there's been quite a few employees in the retail sector that have gotten COVID-19 and many have died of those that have gotten it. So I think a lot of the, cust uh, the employees of these stores are very cognizant of being so close, especially at the checkout counter. That's always been a concern to me. You can't be six foot away from somebody. So consequently, they, they relish the fact that we're encouraging masks and that the customers wear masks. So I've gotten a lot of good feedback as we've gotten out to the different businesses and talked to them. Yeah, that's great. And Mariana, I want softballs from now on, okay? Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep have the hardball uh, questions go to him. I'm Mayor, fine this that. next question is a very good question. It comes from Max P. <laughs> Max is asking, what are the fiscal impacts to the city budget, and will there be any delays or cancellations of planned projects for fiscal year 2020? You know, this is a wonderful question. I started approaching this with Vice Mayor Carroll. We've been talking with our staff over the last couple of weeks. I'm always looking at the horizon. It's what I do. It can be sometimes irritating to staff, but I like to look at the future, understanding we've got a problem and how do we address it rather than just react when things are bad. So um, on the 28th of April, our council meeting, we have been working uh, very diligently this past weekend, the entire weekend I was talking to staff about bringing forward uh, what the impact of COVID-19 is on our city. And it's serious, it's, it's serious. LA there, I think they have a 12 to 24 month, they're laying folks off. Yes. Uh, Fullerton just laid off 135 employees. Luckily, we don't have that problem at this time because all the forward thinking and conservative approach to our employee contracts and to how we run our city, uh, I'm a, somewhat of a tightwad, and now that you're on the board, I've noticed you're similar. Uh, but there's a benefit to that when you come into um, these tough cyclical downturns, and this is way worse than a regular downturn. That's right. Um, but we're looking uh, just to end the year in June 30th, close to, we're saying it could be between 15 and $22 million loss. If we had to sustain that in a year, our reserves would be gone. The good, the good point is that we have $113 million in reserves and we have absolutely no city debt. We don't owe anything on our buildings. When we built our um, community centers, we have a lot of beautiful new ones, as we all know. Paid. They're not open right now. We want to get them back open, but paid we've for. paid cash. We, they're, they're paid for. So we're in a much better position than most cities throughout the United States and especially in California and even in Orange County. So. Uh, a couple uh, things we are gonna be looking at doing, any contracts that are coming up, all of them will be renegotiated to save money under this umbrella of so many people you know, having being out of work. We're also looking to freeze positions. We're not gonna furlough or let any employee go. That is my promise, it's Vice Mayor's promise that we're keeping our staff. If they have to become more generalist to do work that they're maybe not used to in their department, but they're able to take on work that maybe a contractor was doing, we're gonna be talking to our staff about that because we wanna retain our staff. They're great, they've been very loyal to us, and they're really the core of what makes Irvine great. 
So that's something we're going to be doing. Um, of course, again, looking in more detail at our, our retail center of, I'm sorry, retail sales tax coming forward. We're looking at our property tax. We're looking at all the, the closures of our centers. There's $6 million right there in fees we get from our softball and our events that we put on. So it, it, it is a, a tough um, a financial uh, look ahead something difficult to tackle, but we're really spending a lot of time going over it, and we will be bringing this forward on the 28th, but I think we're going to be in a much better place than most. And then I am, uh, I brought this up on my Facebook, and then I noticed the county is proposing it, and I know the governor did, but may I say I was the first with the idea. Um, we are proposing a mayor's economic advisory council, and vice mayor will be serving with me. We're going to be, I'm going to be bringing forward business interest here in the city from UCI, from Fullerton, um, from some of our development community, our chamber, bringing the brightest together in a room. And we're going to start talking about how we can reopen Irvine, how we can re-energize our retail centers. One idea I had, it's going to be hard for folks. I'm sorry to take so much time on this, but it's, it's a, a wonderful question. An idea I had is that as people are kind of frightened to go back out, um, I was thinking with the weather getting warm, it'd be nice to take some of our centers and opening them up like they do in Europe. I don't know if you go to some of the plazas during the day, but then at night they turn them into eateries and they put white tablecloths around plazas. And I'm thinking it might be good to open up some of our centers and have much more outdoor eating opportunity. People can go to the door, take their food and enjoy eating outdoors just to get used to getting back out in the public, but not being so close as you would inside a restaurant. So these are some of the ideas I have. And I just, uh, as all of you, we want to get back to work. We want to get back energizing our community. But I think we're going to do fairly well as we move forward. And we're on top of it. I just want you to know that. And I don't know if you want to add anything else, uh, Vice Mayor Carroll, but you've been working with me side by side and moving this forward. So, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, only Mayor that I would just, just briefly add, you've said it all. Uh, and a great suggestion on the outdoor dining, um, the al fresco, whatever it's called, and on the lawns. And we have such beautiful lawns in our parks. I mean, I'm just I'm great visualizing weather, this right? now so, at Heritage, yeah. at Northwood, at Turtle Rock Community Park. I mean, it, 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 right, with lights up, and that's a really wonderful thing. But I would just say this, just one, just to add the one thing uh, to your your comments would be level of service. I think it's fair to say that our goal too, as we push forward on this as a city council, is to also maintain the highest level of service that our residents are accustomed to. Part of the reason for which you moved here to Irvine. That's a We're good not point. looking at attacking uh, or taking down any of those service levels, be it parks and recreation, the animal care center, public safety, and any of those items. So, and just quickly, I, the one point you asked, cancellation of planned projects would be closed in 2020. Right now, so much is closed. We're really looking to reopen things. So, uh, yeah, but we don't have anything specific we're looking to shut down. I'm trying to talk to the folks at Live Nation. What can we do to get our concerts going, but do it in a way that people uh, aren't congregating quite so close together? We're trying to come up with ideas. I don't know how many of you remember years ago, because I've been around a long time, is the drive, drive through through our drive up uh, theaters. You know, you'd go to these big outdoors and you'd have your car and you'd watch your movie and have your popcorn. There may be ways that we could get the amphitheater music to be more more outdoor and expanded out of the, the center they have, where cars could just drive up and they could serve you uh, food or whatnot and still hear the music in your car. I don't know, it's something to think about. Well, Mayor, that would be good, but it also has to have that really cool kind of old timey speaker that you hook onto your window. Right. Halfway, right, that like blares the sound. I think I saw Star Wars at a drive through I had my PJs <laughs> on, but I remember that. Anyway, I'm sorry to take so much time on that one item, but I think it was a very important question, and thank you so much, Max. Thank you, Mayor. Vice Mayor, this next question is for you. A resident who identified themselves with their initials BB is asking, are you planning to disinfect roads and public areas on a regular basis? All right. Are we planning to disinfect roads and public areas on a regular basis? Uh, the, well, the public right-of-way is not being disinfected. Uh, landscaping, street and sidewalk sweeping continues to take place. We're still doing street cleaning. You may have noticed that on your residential streets. Um, daily emptying of trash cans, that continues to be performed at our parks and community centers because 
uh, well, really outside the community centers and our park areas and our trail areas because they're being used. In fact, they're being used more than they're usually being used uh, by many orders of magnitude. So we're out there, they're cleaning that as well. And then our team is also promoting the use of good sanitary practices as well. Um, we've also disinfected the buildings. I know you may have heard, uh, Mayor, you know, we've disinfected like the city buildings, hall complex. Right? Yeah. yeah, and there's some like 60 buildings All that we've disinfected. Buildings, right. Um, the tot lot of commit, commitment, uh, the equipment on the tot lots, those were sanitized daily until we realized that basically it can remain on these surfaces. And just to the tot lot, um, I'm not too far removed from those tot lots. Uh, for, not personally, but for my kids. Although sometimes I've I would, seen you on I would jump swings. on them myself, Mayor. <laughs> I love uh, the swings. You know, it was I've usually, it was usually me failing at the pull-up bar <laughs> with my kids. But that be in the monkey bars. But... Um, <laughs> It, it, we found out that it just it just stays on there, and I was just thinking the other day, and it was my goodness, it's got to be so darn hard because those tot lots were like an oasis. You know, you send your kids into these tot lots, you can sit on the bench, and you could take a break for a few minutes, and hang uh, out with your friends, and hang fun. out. Now we can't yeah. do any of that during this time, but we do want to just stress this is a temporary time, and as Mayor said, we are working, um, really working hard to reopen. Uh, our community, as well as the state's looking to reopen itself, as the nation is look, op, looking to reopen itself. Mayor, this next question is for you. Another good forward-looking question from Becca C. She is asking, will city's summer programs be open for elementary kids? Well, I wish I could say yes at this point in time, but um, I just say that what we're doing is monitoring constantly the evolving situation and we're taking guidance from the county and the state. We're really under their directive uh, to be able to consider opening up programs, but as soon as we get the go ahead, we will certainly do that. But we want to put our families, our children's safety first above everything else and every decision that we make. Thank you. Vice Mayor, this next question is for you. Roxy G is asking, will Orange County follow suit with LA County and extend the state home order until May 15th? Yeah, that's a good question, Roxy. Um, the city of Irvine is gonna continue to, on a daily basis, monitor the situation. Uh, that's what our staff team uh, has been doing. That's what our emergency uh, disaster group is doing, headed by the mayor and our city manager. Um, it's constantly evolving. Um, we know this, at this point, we're gonna to continue to follow Governor Newsom's stay-at-home order. Um, the governor, uh, I think, had a lot of foresight, and our state had a lot of foresight in essentially flattening this curve early. And for those that aren't really um, too into data, I apologize to you, and I won't quote it, but I'll just ask everyone, I would implore you all, if you don't think California as the most populous state by many, many millions over any other state in the union. If you don't think we have done our part, if you don't think that we have actually taken this virus, this pandemic, and crushed it to a very large degree, all you need to do is look at other states. And it's very unfortunate, but you could look at New York that is far smaller than we are. And you could look at New Jersey that is far smaller than we are. And you can even look at Michigan, Mayor, Right. And this state of California, this massive, amazing state, has done so much in such a short period of time in fighting this thing. It's just fascinating to me. Uh, so we will continue to follow it. Uh, we will take appropriate measures, uh, and we're going to do that in accordance with state orders. Mayor, this next question is for you. A variation of this question was asked earlier, but I'll repeat it anyway. Jane H. is asking, how do I report violations of social distancing that I see in the community? Well, yes, I think we addressed it earlier, but um, what I would suggest is you call the Irvine Police Department, and the number to call is 949. This is the non-emergency number, but they will get back to you, 724-72000. So if anyone sees people that, and you know, I think the governor made it clear, it's really about a social encouragement for all of us to say to our neighbor, hey, you know what, why don't you keep some distance? Do you have a mask? That kind of thing. A couple of times I've shared that with some yeah. folks in a polite way. 
But if it doesn't work, then I would call the Irvine Police Department and we do have our officers out on their bicycles. We have our officers in the open space on their horses. Uh, they're out there and they would have no problem sharing with folks that you believe could be you know, endangering others. And I think it's um, a good thing to do, but just doing it in a very kind and nice way. So 949-724-7200. Vice Mayor, Scott Kay has a question for you. It is fairly long, so bear with me, please. With the ongoing COVID-19 situation, I've seen in the news where some local areas have directed their local police departments not to enforce current speed laws. Is this policy the same here in Irvine? Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Scott. That's a great question. Um, Other enforcement. Absolutely, <laughs> exactly. Another I, I am the uh, Mr. Enforcement Vice Mayor of well, I think it's that. I think it's your logo on your it's shirt. The, it's gives the, the it's sense the, it's that the, uh, you're, you're it, the official enforcer. It's the enforcer. jacket. <laughs> yeah, but I'm happy to take that question. Thank you, Scott. And I've seen the same stories as well, as I'm sure the mayor has. Uh, there actually has been instances of uh, street racing and drag racing in certain communities. Uh, you know, this stuff happens in sort of, they call it sort of a flash manner, where it's very quickly put up on social media, like, let's go such and such um, corner or such stretch of, of arterial road or highway and let's race. And it's extremely dangerous and it's strongly discouraged and it could be possibly deadly. It's not happening here in Irvine. We don't expect it to happen here in Irvine. And we would only say that... Um, you know, our officers, our sworn men and women are out there. They're patrolling the streets uh, and residents and visitors to our city are encouraged and really mandated to follow all the same traffic laws, speed, uh, speed limits and so on uh, that were in place prior to this pandemic. This pandemic does not give us license to do things that are not lawful. So we would only just report, um, ask you if you would, Scott and others that have this concern or if you see something, say something. Please call our police department uh, and let us know that it's occurring. Uh, the best um, method we can have a lot of this detection is not just the layer of our, uh, our, the men and women of our police department patrolling, but also the residents themselves. We would encourage you to call uh, if you see something. Mayor, Vice Mayor, we only have a few minutes left, uh, probably enough for a couple of questions. Great. This next question is for you, Mayor. Jim S. is asking, what measures are in place to support and protect the health of senior citizens? Thank you so much. And we will try to be, sh I'll try to be short on my answers so we can I'll get through going. a couple, <laughs> yes, we can go faster. But um, our senior community is um, overseen by our community services department. We are, and several of our nonprofit groups here in the city of Irvine and our Irvine Police Department, we're very aware of the demographics of where our seniors are located. Uh, they have been notified to contact us with numbers. We're reaching out to them with our Meals on Wheels program and any services they need. We are um, in very close contact with the majority of our seniors here in the city. So we're very concerned about this vulnerable population and we're so pleased, of course, they um, pretty much are rule followers. So a lot of our seniors, you're not gonna see them out doing too much that would you know, violate any of our directives, but uh, we are watching out for them, making sure they have food, they have medical support and help, and we're very pleased to be a part of um, that effort here in our city. Vice Mayor, this will be our last question for today. A resident with initials A.H. is asking, is there any financial assistance for Irvine residents from the city of Irvine? Great. Thank you very much, Mariana. Thank you, A.H. Uh, we do have many resources on our city website that residents can take advantage of. As the mayor said, we have certain programs for those with food insecurity and those that are at risk and may have trouble getting out of their homes, that we're doing active direct work as far as Meals on Wheels and one meal per day programs and deliveries of groceries and picking up of prescriptions and things like this. But there's also resources beyond that uh, that we can get you in touch with. Resources from our faith communities, such as Mariner's Church, Saddleback Church, and other churches as well, and other uh, houses of worship. Interfaith, uh, the Interfaith yeah. Council, uh, Interfaith all across Council. the city, we have folks that are on the web page asking they will help. They'll reach out and help. So that it's really wonderful, right? Yeah, and not only uh, probably mentioned. I know the mayor has been instrumental in this organization for a very, very long time. 
our biggest secular organization founded here in Irvine, initially for Irvine, and now it's greater than Irvine, Families Forward. This is an organization that jumps on Irvine uh, families in need right away and gives them the help that they need financially and otherwise. Um, so we would just say, go to the website. You're probably seeing at the bottom of the screen, if you don't see it, it's 949 724 8250. And also, um, one other point that I know that the federal government is now offering up to like 1.2, 1.4 community uh, block grant monies, additionally, specifically for the COVID 19 pandemic. So yeah. we have around that uh, amount of money, around 1.6 every year that we give to nonprofit groups. And some are capital money, some are direct monies to all these nonprofits to help folks. Well, now we're going to be looking at this uh, amount. And Mariana, it was like 1.2 million. Is that correct? Or? That is correct, Mayor. So we're going to be deciding how we can help our community. Some will be for rent, but a very, it'll be a very narrow um, uh, community offering, but it will be for rent abatement for a short period of time. Those are very much in need and um, on the verge of being homeless. <clears throat> and other ways that we can offer for food service and even more expanded uh, food delivery. I know I was watching the news uh, yesterday and in L.A., uh, they have a a couple different centers in LA, and they said it's supposed to be for the children, for the kids that are out of you know school and they need food because they're all on these assisted programs. But the parents are coming in, and so they're feeding them in these plastic bags of sandwiches and a fruit and chips yeah. and whatnot every day. They're serving a, over a million bags of food a week, and they can't sustain it because the school district's paying for it. So the need is out there. People, we don't seem to realize it, and there's a lot of people still have jobs, making good salaries, but for many of us that are struggling and financially under difficult times, we understand that, um, and it's important to realize that we're here to help you, and we're going to do everything we can. So make sure you remember those two numbers, 724-7200, but specifically the specific ombudsman number that I created with uh, Vice Mayor Carroll oh, about three weeks ago. We were getting so many calls, I couldn't handle them. <laughs> I was on the phone from 7 till 9, 10 yeah. at night, our staff was. So now we call the, ask you to call the ombudsman line, and we have all these coordinated effort. And that number again is 949-724-8250. So please take those numbers. When you get your card in the mail this week, put it by your phone. And if you need any help at all, please don't feel embarrassed or, or hesitate to call us because a lot of people are feeling the same thing you are. They're, they're struggling. I'm personally struggling. Uh, I, yeah. I'm not selling my real estate. I had to file for unemployment. It's embarrassing for me to have to say that, but I can't sustain my, my income on what I make here at the city. So yeah. um, we're all in a, a tough spot, and I want you all to know that we care. We want to help you. Whatever we can do, we're here for you. So thank you for um, reaching out again. Well, hopefully we'll do this yeah. one next week. Is that correct? We're yeah, if there's interest, we'll be there for you next week and answering your questions again. But this has been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.